Hello, so this is the last series of um, microscopic organization of lymphoid organs. So we left it at lymph nodes, so we continue. So lymph nodes are usually elongated and kidney shaped. Okay, so they have a convex surface where the afferent vessels bring um, blood, and at the hilum is where you have efferents. Okay, efferent lymphatics. So um, these lymphatics usually converge to form larger trunks, such as in the neck, axilla, and groin. So the axillary lymph nodes are there, they are the groin you have inguinal lymph nodes, parioteic nodes. So this is the structure of a lymph node. So we have a convex, um, it's kidney shaped with a convex area where afferents come in and concave area where the hilum is and where you, you um, the efferent lymphatics exit and the um, it has a capsule and beneath the capsule you have a subcapsular space and the capsule sends in septa okay dividing the gland and the septa carrying lymphatics so you have an outer cortex with lymphoid nodules you can see the nodules here and an inner medulla with um, lymph uh, medullary codes and sinusoids so this is the medulla this is the cortex with the um, lymphoid nodules so what is the histological feature of a lymph node like any other immune immune organ it has reticulin fiber to support the lymphocyte it has an outer cortex that has densely packed um, lymph nodules with lymphocytes and a medulla that has medullary codes and medullary sinuses sinuses are just endothelial lined vascular channels so the codes are in between the sinuses so the cortex the outer part of the cortex has the lymphoid nodules, as we have said. These have a less dense germinal center. The center of the follicle or the lymph nodules are less dense, so they appear lightly stained. When you go to the deeper part of the cortex, from this is outer cortex with lymphoid follicles, the deeper part is the paracortical zone that neighbors the medulla. It's devoid of lymphoid nodules or lymphoid follicles. So this is the histology of the lymph node. We've said it's a kidney-shaped organ with a capsule. Beneath the capsule is a subcapsular space. So it has a convex um, part where afferents come in and a hilum where efferents will exit. So it has a capsule and a subcapsular space. Outer cortex. So it has an outer cortex and inner medulla, and the cortex is divided into two, the outer portion and the paracortical or the deep portion. So the outer portion has lymphoid follicles, the Fs or lymphoid nodules, and these contain lymphocytes, and the center has less lymphocytes, and that's what we call the germinal center. Mm -hmm. So, and in the medulla, you have medullary codes, and sinuses medullary sinuses are endothelial lined channels containing blood so all this is cortex this is medulla these are trabeculi the capsule sends in trabeculi into the gland okay so again the capsule is a fibrous capsule it on the convex side it's pierced by afferent um, vessels and the capsule is lined by endothelial cells to form the subcapsular sinus. A sinus is an endothelial lined um, channel. So within the sinuses, you find reticulin um, strands, and these reticulin strands are reticulin fibers that support the cells within the lymph node. Then we also have macrophages. These usually filter um, antigens from the afferent lymph nodes. Okay, so then. Um, the lymphocytes are what are labeled L here. Okay, so remember you have lymphocytes and dendritic cells within the subcapsular space. This is your capsule, this is your subcapsular space before you get to the cortex. So this is how the outer cortex looks like, usually with lymphoid follicles. And the lymphoid follicle has two parts, an inner germinal center and an outer mantle zone. So the germinal center is usually lightly stained and the mantle zone is darkly stained so the mantle zone contains small resting b cells okay small resting b cells so usually you have the mantle zone is wider um, on one side so towards the capsule you can see this side is wider compared to this other side so it's wider towards the capsule and you'll find lots of b cells 
T cells, dendritic cells, and macrophages within the, the capsule. Remember, the germinal center um, is light staining or pale, and the mantle zone is dark staining, is the outer portion. The mantle zone contains the small resting B cells, and it's wider towards the capsule. This is the capsular region. So we have follicular dendritic cells, antigen presenting cells, macrophages. So all those are contained within the germinal center. Actively dividing cells. Resting B cells are in the uh, mantle zone, but actively dividing B cells are in the germinal center together with dendritic cells, antigen presenting cells, and macrophages. So the paracortical zone has no lymphoid follicle. So you'll just see the, the T cells, okay, within the paracortical zone. Then you get to the medullary. The medulla has medullary codes and sinuses. So the medullary codes are separated by the irregular sinuses, which are endothelial lined vascular channels. So which cells are within the medulla? You have plasma blasts from the germinal center, and which are the major cells? So you have a lot of plasma cells within the, the medulla of the lymph node. So usually lymph nodes can enlarge when there is infection. Like when you have infection in the breast, axillary lymph nodes will enlarge. So infection of the tissue where the lymph node drain will cause lymph node enlargement. And then you have some blood tumors that can, uh, or malignant tumors that can spread into the lymph nodes. For example, if you have breast cancer, can spread to the axillary lymph nodes. Then we go to mucosa associated lymphoid tissue, which we had discussed lymphoid cells or lymphoid follicles within the mucosa of GIT, respiratory tract, genitourinary tract. And in the oropharynx, we have the tonsils. In the ileum, we have the pears patches, okay? Even the breast contains lymphocytes and plasma cells. So this lymphoid, mucosa-associated lymphoid tissue have lymphoid follicles, which also have lightly stained germinal centers. Mm -hmm. And the main function of mucosa-associated lymphoid tissue is um, antigens that are going to enter through GIT or RESP or genitourinary, they're able to be dealt with by these immune cells within the mucosa before they get into blood. So that's the function. So for example, within the oropharynx, we have the palatine tonsils. Okay, palatine tonsils together with pharyngeal uh, tonsils, tubal tonsils, and the adenoids form the Waldeyer's ring. The components of Waldeyer's ring include palatine tonsils, lingual tonsils in the tongue. We have pharyngeal, tubal tonsils, the adenoids in the nasopharynx. So they form the Waldeyer's ring. So usually, what's the histology of palatine tonsil? Palatine tonsils are just lymphoid tissue within the oropharynx covered by stratified squamous parakeratinized epithelium. And this epithelium invaginates into the parenchyma of the tonsil, forming tonsillar crypts. Invaginates into the parenchyma, forming tonsillar crypts. And the parenchyma contains lymphoid follicles with pale staining germinal centers and darkly staining mantle zones. So the antigens usually enter the crypts they pass the follicles and the follicles which have immune cells are able to deal with the antigens. And the efferents will pass to the deep cervical lymph nodes. So this is what we are talking about. These are the uh, palatine tonsils, stratified squamous epithelium. Okay, and the epithelium invaginates into the parenchyma forming the crypt. So this number one, this is a crypt. Number two is the stratified squamous epithelium. Number three is the lymphoid uh, follicle. Okay, F lymphoid follicle with an inner germinal center. And uh, number six is the capsule. Okay, so it, it's always it's surrounded by capsule. And then number seven, you have mucous glands around there so this is the structure of when you see this image this is a palatine tonsil stratified squamous epithelium invaginates and then you have lymphoid follicles invaginates to form crypts definitely gut associated lymphoid tissue these are lymphoid follicles within the git a good example in the ileum you have the pears patches and this is how they look like so again lymphoid follicles within the um, wall of the ileum pears patches definitely also have light staining germinal center which are composed of um, maturing b cells okay and then the mantle zone as usual will have the small resting lymphocytes so next is the spleen. It's in the left upper quadrant in the abdomen. 
supplied by splenic artery and vein, and it produces immunological response against blood-borne antigens. So they're able to remove particulate matter or aged blood cells, okay, from the circulation. And then the spleen also carries out a hemopoietic role in normal fetuses, so it's able to produce blood. And also in adults with certain diseases, it's able to help with hemopoiesis. So the spleen is covered by a capsule, which is a dense connective tissue, and it sends in trabeculae to divide the parenchyma into incomplete compartments. And this trabeculae usually originate at the hilum and they carry neurovascular structure. So covered by capsule, dense connective tissue capsule that sends in trabecular to divide the gland into incomplete compartment and the trabecular are carrying with them neurovascular structures. So the parenchyma of the spleen is divided into two parts, the white pulp and the red pulp. White pulp is T cells forming, uh, it's lymph lymphocytes actually, T cells around and um, central arterial. So the white pulp is what we call the periarterial lymphatic sheath, pulse, periarterial lymphatic sheath and lymphoid nodules together form white pulp. Then red pulp is formed by splenic codes and sinusoids and the splenic codes are called Bill-Rhodes codes. So the splen splenic pulp, the parenchyma of the spleen is divided into white pulp and red pulp. White pulp are periarterial lymphatic sheath and lymphoid nodules, while the red pulp are the splenic cords and sinusoids.